on the inside of me. Yes. You know, what is God trying to reveal to me yes. and reveal to us yes. so we can move forward and start repeating these yes. cycles? Yes. You know, and Apostle and I was talking about cycles and I, I can't disclose the whole conversation, but I said to him, I had to ask myself, why am I continually getting caught up in these cycles? Yes. You know, you year after three years, huh? year after year, <laughs> After year after year, I'm like, dang, I'm getting the same result. <laughs> you know, this is not working for me. Right, right. There you, you know, go. There you and, go. and this is really not working for us. I'm just speaking individually yeah. Yeah. to the body. So we got to really start questioning ourselves mm -hmm. and say, well, you know, you know, number one, why is this year real hard, harder than last year? And why am I repeating these cycles? Mm -hmm. And what do I need to do? Who do I need to connect with yeah, to good. break these cycles that's and good. get free? That's good. Because I also thought about in this teaching is that I never had a baby before naturally. We all know this, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I never had a baby. I never had a baby in my life naturally. It's not going to happen. Okay? <laughs> but I was thinking about... Yeah. I, you, you know. Y'all know what I mean. Come on. But my thought was this, is that when a baby is coming out of a womb of a woman in the natural... The baby just can't say, I don't want to come out. That's right. That's you know, right. the baby is going to be thrust through, and, and the mother is not saying, stay in either. Mm -hmm. She's not saying, uh-uh, it's not time to come out. The baby like, it's time to come out? I'm coming out. But the thing about us is that we have a choice, whether we birth that child or not. Mm -hmm. And it's connected to our thoughts and our actions. So we mm -hmm. definitely got to think about that. Mm -hmm. All right? So, yeah, for the record, I'm not going to have no... It's physically no time soon. All right. The question, the question I'll post to us is this: What is sorrow, and why do we experience sorrow when God is attempting to birth something through us? And so we looked it up in the Strong's in the Greek, which was thirty seventy seven, and it's pronounced lupe, properly, dis distress, vexation, physical or emotional pain. Heavy, heart, sorrow, or grief that brings a person down. So when I read that, this is what came to my mind. I said, okay, this is what sorrow is. And when it brings me down, it brings me down to an earthly state. Yeah. Come, on, come on, it's good. It brings me down to a lower level of living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I start being selfish and think about, oh my goodness, God, why me? Mm -hmm. You know, why not me? Why not us? Right. But we got to have the right perception when we're going through this process because it's a birthday. So it's also connected to a pain of mind and body. Mm -hmm. Annoyance. You ever been annoyed before? Mm -hmm. By who? Huh. What? <laughs> yeah, okay. <Job. laughs> I've been annoyed by the job. I've been yeah. annoyed by... Uh, I get annoyed by one thing is that when people group text... <laughs> oh, oh my goodness that is, like, why do these people got me in the group text oh I'm not saying our last you know gathering that we did but I'm saying in times past <laughs> right because we group text up in there but it was but it was okay all right but I'm saying that what is it really annoying me is it really the people or is it something on the inside of me that needs to be addressed because we can easily say that it's them mm -hmm. But then we got to go in turn and say, it's, in me. it's really me. Mm -hmm. You know, what in my mentality is allowing me to be annoyed? So annoyance, affliction, yeah. and a person's mourning. Uh, let's see. So we haven't, we're going to get to the good part in a second, but that's where, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the story of the tourists in the hair. You remember the story? Mm -hmm. All right. So the, the hair lost. Because he was in pride, he was in performance, he was trying to appease men. He was doing things just for his own glory. Yeah. All right. And I didn't I don't think I said that at the end of the story, the tortoise did win. And the same people that ridiculed him celebrated him. Come on. Yes. Well yeah. mm -hmm. Come on, you yeah. come on, let's go. Yeah. It's time. Because I we say that because people that are in the world may ridicule us. Mm -hmm. They may not say it verbally. Right. They may say it through their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But guarantee you this, that if we stay faithful and allow the birthing process to take place, mm -hmm. they're going to celebrate us 
Mm -hmm. Let's not get caught in the celebrating of us. Come they on. really celebrate celebrating God. Yeah. Amen. They really celebrate. So we all gotta look through it through a lens of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not me being exalted or me being famous. It's about lifting up the name of God or the name of Christ. All right. So if we the church or the body of Christ attempt to build according to societal norms or worldly customs in hope of receiving affirmation from man, we will suffer loss and experience sorrow. Mm -hmm. All right, let's give an example. Mm -hmm. You had a great idea, but it wasn't a God idea. Come on. From that idea, that thought, you begin to build through <laughs> actions and different things that we do. And then all of a sudden, you have pleasure for a season, and then the hand of stubble was burnt up, and now we got to start over again. Those are my cycles. That, that's the three-year cycle. Like, dang, okay. We started this. What was the intent? And then it ended up getting burnt up, and then I had to start over again. And that could cause great grief and frustration and emotional turmoil. It's difficult coming back from when something you lost, as far as suffering and loss, when we built according to lust or pride or something that was outside of the will of God. It can be a difficult, we've all been there before, it can be a difficult coming back or recovery, but God, thank, thank God we serve a God that's a God of recovery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about the people that don't serve God. Right. They only recover through drug use yeah. Yeah. or through external things. That's their recovery, and it keeps them in bondage. Mm -hmm. So something to think about. So if we, the church, or the body of Christ, attempt to build through societal norms, we will suffer loss. This type of building is after that of the flesh and represents instant gratification because I'm not willing to wait on God. Guess what? I got a better idea than you, Lord. I'm going to go ahead and do this on my own. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. But God is not involved in it, so that means I gotta work extra, extra hard mm -hmm. to maintain it. Mm -hmm. I gotta toss and turn at night. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get no sleep, sleep, even though sleep is available. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sleep is always available, but I can't get I can't get no sleep because I'm thinking about the situation, mm -hmm. and I need to really trust the Lord with the situation. But I can't trust Him if it's not originated through Him. Mm -hmm. Come on, that's good. Yes. Make that point, bro. That point. Sorrow occurs when we suffer loss due to the fire of God burning up the hay and the stubble. So you can refer to 1 Corinthians 3, 12 and 13. Sorrow can also occur when we attempt to interpret our spiritual birthing through a carnal or unrenewed mind. Mm -hmm. Sorrow can occur when we attempt to interpret our spiritual birthing through a carnal or unrenewed mind. So apostle come talk to me, one of the leaders come talk to me, we have a conversation, correction is brought. I process that through an unregenerated mind, or unrenewed mind, sorrow, instead of joy. Because when the correction comes, it's really freedom. When the correction comes, it's really freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Come on. If I didn't have a mic, I would be clapping. You know, I know sometimes that when messages are brought, like last Sunday, I had to fight through that message. Because I felt like the enemy was trying to put me to sleep. I was sitting right there. I just got up and started walking. There's an awesome teaching that we have in this house called impartation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Refer to it. I'm on that because it's too much in this house for us not to receive from one another. But because we're so used to just being asleep and we just sometimes here, we're not present and available. So it's something to think about. But the sorrow, when it occurs through fire to burn up the hay and the stubble, and when the correction comes, I have to process that according to a lens of freedom and not, oh my goodness. Yeah, my dad used to come say the same thing to me oh, when I was come little. Come on, come on. Yeah. Bring it out. Bring it out. <laughs> My dad used to say, he used to talk with me like that, and I don't feel good about that because it was abuse. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the people in this house aren't abusing each other. We're loving each other. Right, but yeah. the correction just needs to be brought because we have to walk circumspect. Right. Correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, sh we should be happy to get corrected. Amen. Even, I'm not saying being corrected feels good. It does. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we got to lose in order to be free. Yeah. Yeah. So when the correction comes, smile. I remember yeah. Yeah. that pro prophet and I used to always talk about this. And when I used to see her coming, because oh. <laughs> you know she's looking she about her business right. she's like brother Marcus we need to talk yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Come, on. Yeah, come on come on now that I'm more mature we, we had a, a brief incident recently and she said she said to me 
right? Yeah, because it's something that you can't control. You you may feel like you in trouble. Yeah. And I went to talk with her, and I said, no, I don't feel that way anymore. <laughs> hey, man, clap the hey, hey, come on. Okay. You know what that does for us? That says that we're free. Yeah, then right. I, now sure. I'm processing yeah. through the new creation, man. Yeah. Now I'm processing through a renewed mind. So the correction is love, not abuse. Yeah. All right, I'll repeat. Correction in, is love, not abuse oh, yeah. in this house. I can't speak for anybody else. Right. I'm just saying for us. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, <laughs> that that which is spirit is spirit. So John referred to John three and six. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Mm -hmm. So when we attempt to instantly gratify ourselves through the works of the flesh, which is performance, we well we we attempt to. Instantly, instantly gratify ourselves through the words of the flesh through performance. So when we understand we are in Christ, we will no longer so succumb to instantly gratify ourselves through the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. When we understand who we are in Christ, Come on now. Yes. when we understand who we are in Christ, we will no longer so succumb to mm -hmm. instantly gratifying ourselves through performance or works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about the thought came to me about being feeling inferior. And many times we may feel inferior, but the feeling is wrong because we're comparing ourselves to other people. And then once that happens, we begin mm -hmm. to perform. Yep. You ever been fake before? Yeah, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Check it we all been fake before. So I'm um, um, an example. You come into a room, you see this certain person, and then you start acting. And then when a person leaves, you back to your same old self. Yeah. You been there before? Yes. Yeah, I have. I tell my students all the time. I say, why are you acting? <laughs> this is not a movie, this is real life. You don't have room to act. Mm, Just right. be. You don't have to act. Just be who you are. Mm -hmm. But that is a form of performance and behavior modification that we got to be aware of. So we will no longer be at the mercy of peer pressure. Now, from my perspective, there's two types of peer pressures. There are peer pressures that come from those in the world, which allows us to conform to the image of the world, and there's pressure that comes from us in the kingdom that allows us to conform to the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. Got it? So mm -hmm. if you hear peer pressure, don't get mad. Like, peer, here it comes. And peer pressure is so strong that sometimes we're not even aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. If we yeah. send it to the spirit, we can feel it. Right. But if we just walk in casually, right. we won't be able to connect with it and we'll just conform and not even know it. Right. That's important. 